everyone. Today is our day to be inspired by Claude Monet. Claude Monet was alive from 1840 until 1926. Here's what he looks like. Claude Monet. Now, when you look at Monet, you might think, oh, it looks like it should say Monet. Well, Claude Monet, ladies and gentlemen, was French, which is why the E and the T are silent. He is an Impressionist painter, but what does that mean? Claude Monet would use paints to give the impression of what something looked like. It might be a scene on the water, but it looks a little blurry, kind of dreamy. So he's what we would refer to as an Impressionist. Claude Monet was very, very interested and he loved how light changed things. Time of day, in the morning, how things look different than they look at night, different seasons of the year. You can see how that could be very, very interesting. He had a beautiful house in Giverny, France. Here it is, right there. It was a pink house with green trim. And this house was where he did some of his most famous paintings. His water lilies, which was the one that I just showed you before that looks like this. And then of course the water lily pond, which was the bridge in the back of his house. Now this is a black and white photograph of his bridge. So you can see it's this really cool bridge over a pond with all this beautiful garden around it. And as an impressionist, here is an image that would reflect that idea of lots of colors, kind of dreamy, a little blurry, but we can still tell what's going on. So today we are going to use that inspiration from Claude Monet to create our own scene of Claude Monet's famous green bridge. Today what we'll need is we're going to have some paper, any size will do. I will be using my paper horizontally again. Once Last week we referred to that as hamburger, short and fat. And crayons or oil pastels, a paintbrush, a watercolor paint set, paper towel, and a water cup so that you have all of your supplies set up and ready to go. Okay, so here we are. Here's my paper. You can see I have it set up horizontally. I am going to be inspired today by Claude Monet's painting of the water lily pond. So I'm, I will place that just above what we are doing today. And we will start our work today using crayons or oil pastels. I personally am going to be going with oil pastels just because they're a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder, and I'm hoping that will help you see what I am doing more clearly. So here are my oil pastels. Now step one, what we're going to do is I will pull a green crayon or oil pastel, and I would like you to draw a line that's going to represent the separation of the water to the background. We're gonna call that our horizon line. In this particular painting, I think I'll go with just about middle. So I'll take my green oil pastel and best I can draw a line all the way from one side of my paper to the other, like so. Very nice. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add the bridge itself. So when you take a look at this bridge, you can see it goes all the way from one side of the paper to the other, or the painting, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, the, the bridge is green, so I will use a green oil pastel for this. And you'll notice we're not drawing first in pencil because we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna give this impression of this beautiful bridge. So if we have to be a little sketchy and fill it in, that is okay. Here I go. I will start at the left side of the paper and you can see it's kind of like a rainbow, but a little bit flatter. So if I start over here, and take, I'm going to make a curved line from the top of my horizon line all the way to the other. Voila. Next, I'm going to do the top of the bridge. Now the top of the bridge is going to be parallel, which means they'll never crisscross over each other at this point, and we'll create that same arch, but I would say maybe about two or three fingers above where I just was. So now I'll create my top of my bridge, like so. Okay, now you can see I am definitely a sketcher, so I make more than one line at a time. Next, I'm going to place the upright vertical bars of the bridge, starting in the center of the bridge. So if I start at the top of the bridge, in the middle of my page, I'm going to draw one vertical line to connect the top to the bottom. 
Now, as I move over, I'm going to move over again, you know, about this distance that we did for the top and the bottom of the bridge. I'll take about two or three fingers and I'm going to move over to this side. Now we will create a symmetrical bridge, which if you were with me last week, you'll remember that symmetry means it's the same on both sides. So if I did this on this side, I will take and create the same thing on the other side. Now moving over, same distance, let's create one more on the left and one more on the right. So now the bridge is pretty much in place. However, my lines are very, very thin. So at this point, I'm going to add in a little extra color and some thickness to my bridge. So first of all, I will fill in really bright and bold some green for the bottom of my bridge. Make it thicker. And then I'll do the same thing for the top of my bridge. And again, if my lines are a little sketchy, that is okay as we paint and continue to add more things to our bridge. That will become something that we will forget all about that we were concerned about right now. And then I'm going to create my verticals, a little thicker with my green, like so. Adding in a little bit here and there. And now you may have noticed that there is another line, that curved line that separates the top from the bottom of the bridge. Now that I have my verticals in place, I can make my life a little bit easier because all I need to do is to go to this one, skip that one, connect to the next two, the next two, and connect them until I get to the other side. Now, if you'd like to make this one maybe a little bit thinner, that will offset the difference between the top and the bottom. And there is the signature Monet bridge. If I take a look at Monet's painting here, you'll notice there are a few extra colors in Claude Monet's bridge. If we are feeling a little bit ambitious today, we could add a little bit of shadow and a little bit of highlight to our bridge to offset it. You can see I took a black oil pastel and I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow to the bottom of the bridge at the very base of the bridge. I also am going to add just a little bit of black to the top, underside of the bridge itself. And I think I will add just a few little black lines in that middle bar going across here and there. As far as highlights go, if you have a white crayon or a white oil pastel, the highlights where the sun would hit the top of the bridge, we could take that white oil pastel. Now we won't see much of this right now until we start to add some paint, but I can add just a little bit of highlighting to the top of my bridge and to the top of the base of the bridge as well. Now, of course, if we wanted to keep going, you can add some blues, you could add gray, but for time's sake for now, I'm just happy I have my signature green bridge in place. Next, we'll start with some painting. At this point, we're going to paint the sky and add in the impression of some trees in the background. So for starters, we will grab our, our watercolor paints and I'm going to paint the sky solid blue. And we'll get just a base of color going in the sky. So what I'm doing now is I'm activating my blue by sliding and gliding my paintbrush. And now starting at the top of my paper, What's really great about crayons and oil pastels is you can paint right over them and the paint bounces right up because oil pastels, of course, have the word oil in them. And oil and water, of course, do not mix. So the paint just bounces right off. So you don't have to go around it. You don't have to worry about a thing. You can just paint right over the whole top and life is good. See my tape is letting go over here on this side. As my, you may find that your paper will curl just a little bit because of that water 
and the paper coming together. So I'm just gonna grab a quick piece of tape so it doesn't keep doing that to us. There we go. So I just painted in a background for my sky. And what I would like to do is I will just let this dry a little bit. I got a little ahead of myself because now that I have the sky in place, I'm actually going to go to the water at this time. Now to give the impression of water and to make our water look a little bit different than our sky, we're going to use cool colors. Now cool colors, not as in cool awesome, but cool as in temperature, will be focusing on blues, greens, and purples. So with my brush, I already have my blue ready to go, so I think I'll use that first. And if I activate my brush, slide and glide across my blue paint, what I plan to do is to make patches of blue water. Now my water is going to be moving horizontally, so to take a look, I'll move my brush from side to side here. Grab a little more, I'm gonna skip over to this side, add a patch of water there, and then skip over almost like I'm zigzagging across my paper. Also, please keep in mind, these are not complete blocks. They're not rectangles of paint. I'm just moving my brush as if the water is moving in the pond. Now I'll clean off my brush. And to give this impression of multicolored water, I'm going to move on to some purple. Now with my purple, I will activate slide and glide my purple. And now in between those blue places that I made the water, I'm going to crash. I'll start in the plane, but crashing, look how pretty that is. A little bit of the blue into the water to give the impression of a reflection. Now you see this big empty space over here. I'm gonna take my purple and add a little more in there. See how some of it kind of crashes? It's really kind of fun. You just take your brush, move it side to side, not too fussy about anything that happens at this point. And there I have my purple. Now, last but not least, we're going to add some green. Because in this beautiful garden, there were so many green plants and all these green reflections. So now I'll take my brush, activate my green, slide and glide, never smash. And I'm going to focus, first of all, on these open areas. Like this area is open and I'll crash it into the blue and the purple a little bit. A little open area over here, I'll throw in some green. Grab some more green. Oh, look at that's all open right there. And look how pretty what starts to happen when my paints get together to give this impression that the water is reflecting all these great colors that are going to be in my garden. Now mine is starting to run a little bit. I don't think this will be a problem for all of you out there because I imagine you're working flat. So please try to ignore that as it does happen. But with watercolor, watercolors do what they want. So I just always consider that just sort of a happy accident that I can't really control it. So I'll just deal with what happens. Now, if my water is looking a little purple or a little bit green, I could always add just a little extra blue here and there to give that watery impression. Okay, so there's our beautiful water reflecting from the background and the sky. Now, I'm going to wash off my brush, dry it off, and set these down for a little while later. At this time, we're going to work on some of these trees and to give the impression of the trees and things in the background behind the bridge. Now, most of this will be done with paints We'll add a couple dark colors of paint over. But what we'd like to do is to add in some trees and some bases of what's going on back there. Now, as far as the trees and everything in the background, if we take a look at Claude Monet's, we'll notice that there's a bunch of trees in this section that have a lot of vertical lines. They're all going up and down. So I'm going to take one of my colors, my oil pastels, and just in between give the impression of these trees that I see back there. And I might use more than one color. Maybe I'll use this really dark green that I have right here. And then I'll swap it out for a lighter green, adding in some impression lines of these trees that are sneaking back here behind the bridge. And it looks like there's a few more things. Now you can expose more of your sky if you like, if you don't want to fill this all in quite as full as Claude Monet did. But we're going to have our trees come all the way down to the ground. 
where that water and the sky separate. And you'll notice I'm filling in in between my bridge. I could always add in some whites later if I need to. Great, that looks wonderful. And maybe I'll add just a little bit of a brighter green in there just to give that impression of those tall green trees. Well, now that I have those trees in place, in order to fill that in even more, those are green trees. So on top of those oil pastels or crayons, I'll take a little bit of my green paint and fill in the markings in between. That way it's a little bit more solid. My sky might still peek out and we're going to build. Okay, so now we have that type of tree. When I take a look at the other side and I look at some of the trees and things that are happening here, that's almost more of a swirling, curling type of tree. So what I'll do is I'll wash off my paintbrush and now I'll start again. I will start with that darker green, that color that I had before. And now in here, maybe I will add just some curl lines in my dark colors here. Now notice they're just very swirly, little tiny lines. It's almost like I'm scribbling, but I'm scribbling with purpose. So I'll put some of these darker lines in this section over here. Maybe I'll add in some darker trees. I might leave a little of my sky peeking out in between here. And we're giving the impression of a new kind of tree in the background. Now notice I'm spreading out my dark green right now as I'm working. And now I'll switch colors to a brand new green. Let's see, so I'll add in some of my medium color green in between here. Giving the impression of those trees again in the background. And like I said, I might actually leave a little more sky exposed. It might not be quite as deep. And let's see, let's go with some lighter green again. Adding in. Now I might get a little more serious about filling some things in because I know that this lighter green will upset my bridge. Now, of course, we're being inspired by Claude Monet, so it does not have to look exactly like Claude Monet's. Already with the bridge being in place, people will know that we were inspired by Claude Monet's yard because of that green bridge. But if you are not feeling like you want to make as much of these greens, you have every right to make as much or as little as you please. So I'm just continuing to fill in more of this type of tree. Now, if you're wondering, Hey, Mrs. Conrad, he's got all kinds of things like grassy green. That's where the building's going to come in. We're going to do this background first, and then we'll add in those flat, we'll call those like our grand finale type of flowers and stems and things. So continuing to fill all this in. Okay, that's looking pretty great. And now, to finish off those backgrounds of the trees, to give it a, just a little bit of extra tone, is we'll take our green watercolor paint and just anything that's trees. Once again, giving that background paper a little extra tone. We could even, just like we did in the water, we could use some of our darker colors maybe behind, just to give it a little bit of extra. I'll do my corners here so that my sky back here looks a little bit darker. And then perhaps I'll add a little bit of darkness with my blue. And we'll just continue to fill in the sky. Okay, very nice. So now we have the impression of the trees behind the bridge. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to give the impression of these really pretty little water lilies that Claude Monet has in so many of his paintings that he is famous for. We can see these tiny little flowers all in the mix of Claude Monet's water lily pond painting. 
Now we won't be doing that many, but we will add three different sections of these little water lilies. Now the water lilies, I will start with my white oil pastel or my white crayon. And to do this, it's very much like when we did the Van Gogh flowers last week where we did a letter U with a line down the middle. My little water lilies are going to start the same way, a letter U with a line down the middle. Now the challenge for us right now is going to be that we're going to place these little water lilies and we'll spread out three groups of them. One group has one flower, one group has two, and another group has three. So for example, I might start right here and I'm going to put one water lily, a little letter U with a line down the middle right there. Then I'm going to move over to a new part and we're gonna centralize our water lilies in the center of the work of art. So now perhaps one has one, one has two, and then one set's gonna have three. So perhaps here I'll go for the three right away. Here's one U with a line down the middle, one, two, and then a third water lily over here for three. So my set with one, three, and then maybe in here I could put the, the water lily set with two flowers. So one flower with a line down the middle and two flowers with a line down the middle. Now I know they're a little bit hard to see, but we're gonna work on that. Next, we need to grab a pink, like a hot pink or a real bright pink, and we're going to accent that letter U and the line down the middle with our pink, except it's going to be smaller. So you're gonna go inside, pink and pink, smaller than the white was. So here's my first little flower, letter U, line down the middle. Here's my set of three, letter U, line down the middle. U in a line, U in a line. Here's my set of two, my little U with a line and a little U with a line. So there's our flowers. Last but not least for the flowers, we're going to grab a yellow, nice bright yellow if you have it. Let's see, here's my yellow or a gold would work out great. And now with this little bit of yellow, you're just going to add that grand little tiny accent at the top so they stand out. So here's my one, with a little tiny bit of yellow. Add my little bit of yellow to my three and my little bit of yellow to my sets of two. Great. However, water lilies require the lilies to go underneath them. So what we'll do is if I take, I'm going to start with my dark green first. So here is my darker green. And again, we're giving the impression of water lilies. So underneath this little lily, I'm going to draw a little underneath so it looks like it's sitting on a lily pad. And then we want to extend it out to this side and extend your lily pad out to the other side. So you'll end up giving it a base and you can even come around the back of your lily a little bit. So let's give these three lilies a base. And now let's give the impression that they're sitting in a set of lily pads. So we'll connect all that together, real sketchy just giving us this idea that they're sitting in that cluster of lily pads and reeds and weeds. Here's my two. Give them a base to sit on and then fill in to the, to the right, to the left, little sketchy line underneath. Now that was just my darkest green color. Remember I said we would use more than one color. So now that we have the dark green in place, let's go with something that's a little bit lighter, lighter green crayon, lighter green oil pastel. And now add in some of that green to fill in the gaps and to highlight and to give this impression that our water lilies are holding up those pretty lily flowers. Okay, wonderful. And now, if you're feeling ambitious, you could, and if you have the variety, I have a really nice, real light green in my set. So just for fun, I'll add in some of that light green as well. So you might have noticed I worked from darkest color to my lightest color. Now this I'm sure would also look just great if you only had one green. Just giving this idea that our beautiful flowers are sitting on the lily pads. 
and you'll see it's real sketchy. He's even got some blues and some grays in there. You could keep going, some purples, all kinds of fun stuff to work on. All right, so we have our sky and our trees. We have the water complete with the water lilies influenced by Claude Monet. And now it's time to frame everything in with these impressions of the flowers and the reeds and all of the great things that are framing all of this in. So here I go using my darkest green first. What I would like to take care of is just a little bit of these reeds and things that we see along both sides of Claude Monet's water lily pond. So here I go. I'll start here right under my bridge and I'm basically just taking my crayon or my oil pastel and making lines that start at the bottom and work my way up. So pretending I don't even know that that bridge is there, I'll add in just some very free lines, always starting at the bottom and working my way up. And maybe some of these, we can change direction and bring it to the side. So that helps frame in this side of our water. Now I'll take a look at this side and do the same thing. I'm gonna start by my bridge and I'm just working my way down the side of my paper, having a lot of those very free lines coming in. Maybe I'll add a little going towards the water. And on this side, I think I'll go all the way down. Notice I'm working from the bottom of my page and always framing my lines upward. Because if you think about plants and how they grow, they start in the ground and then they grow up towards the sky. We wouldn't want to start here and then go downward. So we are filling that in. I just need a little piece of tape yet because I can see that that came off again. So now we've added in some of those things. Okay, and you can add as little or as much as you wish. Again, there's all kinds of that going on back here. So if you'd want to add a little interest to the separation between your water and the background, we could do something on that order. Let's see. And I think on this side, I'll do the same thing. So it looks like I've got a pretty frame for my water scene that I have going on. There we go. So that was my darkest green. And again, we're gonna work darkest to lightest. So adding in now some of that medium green. Or if you have just one color of green, you could also add in some black. Like if you're working with crayons and we don't have a lot of options, but you'd like to have a darker version of some of these, you could always add in some black just to give it a little extra variety. And here you go. You can see how we're framing things. Things are starting to come to life a little bit more. And here is my last, my light green. Filling in some of those lines with that same light green that I had before. Now, because I can see some of my things back here, one consideration, when I say things, I mean the water, a consideration I could do is that same trick I used behind my trees in the background would be to take some of my watercolor and just fill in maybe those edges to give that more of the impression that it's more solid than what I have going on right now so that my water looks different than the greens at the edges. Really, truly, whatever, if you think it looks like it's a little bit bare, you can either add more colors with your drawing materials or with your paints. Okay, so we are definitely getting there. This has the impression that we've been influenced or inspired by Claude Monet. Last thing I wanna show you is just how you could do some of these little pops of color for some of the flowers that you see. Now again, we're trying to give impressions of flowers. We're not actually making flowers anymore. So when I look at these, it's basically a whole bunch of dots. So uh, one color I have not used, I haven't used any purple yet and I have a really pretty purple. So here it goes. What I could do is where I see some of these little pretty flowers in the edges, I could take my purple and just start making some dots to give the impression of those pretty flowers that I see. Put some in here. If 
you wanted to make like some little flowers are growing here in your edges to give that impression again, just add in some dots. Now you'll notice I'm not doing the classic deep, 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 deep dotting. I'm actually drawing and giving them just a little bit of power. I will dot it through here because I plan to add some extra colors. Could even add a little in there giving that idea of the flowers. And then I can switch to some other colors that I haven't had a chance to use much of. If I take a look, looks like we could maybe even add a little more yellow. That might be really nice. Adding in some yellow flowers to reflect within my dots. And when reds, Beautiful red flowers I could imagine being in his garden. And I could just keep on building and building. As you can see, his garden had a lot going on, so you really can't do too much. Here's where I'll add in, try to add in some extra whites. Give it the idea that we've got some white flowers. And what I'm trying to do is just really spread out where I'm putting my colors. We're talking about that idea of balance. You know, if I do some things on this side, I would want to do some more on the other side. Give it all that treatment that I've been using. And then for myself, before I conclude for today, it just feels to me like I just need a little bit of green in with some of these flowers that are all around in here. So I might take and just give it that idea that there's flowers involved. Okay, so I've shown you the tricks. Now it's up to you if you'd like to fill in some more of the background. You can, of course, take some grays and some whites and if you'd like to make your bridge, you can see here that Claude Monet's bridge definitely had a lot of gray. And now that my background has all of that green in it, I might just want to highlight my bridge a little bit more, make it stand out by giving it some gray and some white. That can very quickly make your bridge, if you've got a lot going on in the background and you want to offset that a little bit more. Maybe taking and doing a little extra line. But as you can see, we can go and go and continue. It was a beautiful garden full of the most beautiful flowers and pretty scenes and all the reflections in the water. So from here on in, add as much as you can. And I look forward to seeing some of your pictures. Please submit them to Mrs. Conrad's Facebook page and have a great time inspired by Claude Monet. Thank you, have a great day.